Hey, what's going on? Captain Joe Rains here for Head First Fishing. Welcome to the new Head First Fishing Show studio. Hope you like what I've done with this set. I think it looks amazing. But uh, got a lot of new camera gear, got new lights, got audio. We got a lot of good things going on here at Head First Fishing. So thank you for coming to this tutorial video. Before we get started on today's topic, I want to thank our sponsors, St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters for making this possible. They're really supportive, great companies, great tackle stores. Go by there and get fitted to fish and mention Head First Fishing. When you check out, you'll get a little discount. Also, I'd like to thank the Pike Consulting Group. They're a Georgia-based company with business here in Tampa Bay. Great guys that will help your construction or manufacturing business stay OSHA compliant. Give Mitchell a call there at Pike Group. He'll come by and give you a free consultation. Now, let's talk about redfish. I'm really excited about today's subject. Redfish are one of my favorite game fish to catch. I love it when I get customers on redfish. So let's get into it. How do you catch more redfish? Well, there is a little secret that I hold that I don't let out and I don't tell a lot of people really. And that is... I used to suck at finding redfish. When I moved here to Tampa Bay, I didn't know where to find a redfish, really. I caught a lot of redfish before in my home waters of Mobile Bay area, but in Tampa Bay, it was a mystery, to be honest with you. I would catch one accidentally when I'm snook fishing, and I would brag about it. Yeah, I'm on the redfish, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, I was not on the redfish. That's how it is for a lot of people. They get a couple of redfish and they're like thinking this is great and stuff like that, but they really have no idea what's going on. And I was one of those people, but over the years I've developed a kind of a strategy that I've learned from being on the water all the time as a full-time captain and guide and networking with other people, watching YouTube videos, reading articles, reading books, getting all this information together I've started to figure out how I can consistently find redfish. And I want to share that information with you. And this is basically a, a short multi-step plan of how I did it. And I think this is repeatable for you. This isn't the only way to find redfish, but I think this will help you understand the mechanics of what's going on out there on the flats. And when I'm talking about this on how you can do it, uh, I am talking about shallow water fishing and I'm talking about water that you can see reasonably well in. So how do you catch these redfish? How do you find them? Once you understand all these parts and pieces you'll start to connect the dots and redfish will be almost easy. They're a predictable animal. Step number one is to figure out the best areas in the bay and that just takes a little bit of research and networking. Get on Google Maps, get on whatever mapping software, online, whatever you got, Navionics, and find the best habitat in your estuary. Get on that map and find the fishiest looking places you can. Now, redfish can definitely be caught in more, what we'll call urban areas, developed shorelines, you know, boat docks, piers, uh, you know, marinas, things like that. They can definitely be caught there. But I want to point you towards where the big biomass of redfish are, where more redfish are, where they're going to congregate, where they're going to be different times of the day, different times of the tide. The habitat, the natural habitat, is going to provide more sustenance and more shelter for redfish. Here in our area in Tampa Bay, we have a bunch of really good areas for redfish that are mostly natural, mostly untouched, and they hold a lot of fish. I fish mostly from the Skyway all the way down to Anna Maria, and I'm fishing a lot in Fort DeSoto Park. I'm fishing Joe Bay, Miguel Bay, and Terracia a lot. Beyond that, uh, further up the bay, you got Bishop's Harbor, you got Cockroach, both of those are notorious for redfish. Uh, you got Whedon Island on the other side, a lot of great redfish there. All these areas are mostly, mostly undeveloped areas, and there's a lot of food, there's a lot of prey there. Uh, there's a lot of fish there. So find those types of areas where you are. These are the places that are going to have the most mangroves. They're going to have the most sawgrass marsh. They're going to have the most oyster beds. They're going to have the most little drainage creeks and little places where redfish and other species can hide. 
There's going to be a lot of food in there for them. There's going to be mud crabs, mangrove crabs, mullet, pinfish, croakers, needlefish, sardines, all kinds of food for redfish. If you want to narrow it down even more, get in touch with some local fishing guides or get in touch with some guys that are hardcore fishermen that grew up in the area and really know their stuff. That can really cut down your search a lot. The second step is really critical. Do not get distracted. Don't go out and tell yourself, oh, I'll just fish this area. I heard that there were redfish here. Oh, this is supposed to be a fishy area and yeah, there's some redfish. I'll try this today. Well, yeah, you might do that and maybe you'll catch some, but you're not going out with a purpose. You really need to hit the water with a purpose to just look for redfish. If you really want to find schools of reds, then you need to cover some serious water. Start out with those broad areas, network, research, narrow them down a little bit more, then get out there on your boat, your skiff, your kayak, and then really start combing the waters, covering some water and looking and looking. And eventually you're gonna start to see them. You're gonna start to see a lot of different fish, not just redfish. You'll see snook, you'll see trout, uh, you'll see cobia, all kinds of stuff. But stay focused on those redfish, scan the waters, and look for those coppery redbacks. You're gonna need to come back to some of these areas repeatedly to figure out when the redfish are there. It's gonna take some real work and dedication, but I promise you it'll be worth it. Once you start doing this, you're gonna start to figure out when the redfish are there. Once I stopped fishing with hope and started looking with intent, that's when I started seeing more and catching more redfish. The third tip I can give you to help fast track you towards finding more redfish is to utilize your time wisely and utilize the conditions to your advantage. When the tide goes out, especially on a big tide, redfish are gonna transition from one place to another a lot of times. Personally, I recommend to you utilizing lower water situations to find more redfish out in the open. And the reason for that is because when the water levels are lower, when the tide has gone out, it's at its lower stage, either going out or even coming back in, then more fish are gonna be pulled out away from hiding. They're gonna be pulled out of the mangroves, they're gonna be pulled out of the sawgrass, out of those back creeks, and they're gonna be more visible to you out in the open. So whenever I wanna find schools of reds, whenever I wanna go sight fish reds, I'm trying to find them when the water level is lower. Like, look right here, look right here. Yeah. Fish moving around right is really what that is? Yeah, it is. No idea. Some fish moving around right there. So we just found our way into a trough in between bars on the flat. It took a little bit to find a way to get in here, but I think now that we're inside one of these bars that we'll be able to find some more fish that are trapped in the low tide. Fish. That might be a fish. Oh, son of a... Oh, he's still on. What do I got? I'm gonna hit the power pole. I got a big old trout, I think. Or, no, I got a red. I'm gonna hit the power pole. I got a red. Nice. Nice redfish. I saw that nervous water. He nailed that paddle tail. Look at that. Nice redfish. Get the landing net. Jumped all over it. Nice. Beautiful. There was no denying that one. He hit it hard. <laughs> With a shallow drafting bay boat, skiff, or kayak, you can go out and find areas that consistently hold redfish on the lower tide stages. Places like potholes, troughs, ditches, or little irregularities on the flat, little scars. Places like that will hold redfish when the water is lower. When the tide rises, those fish are going to move again. More than likely, they're going to move up. Uh, they may go higher up onto the shoreline if they can, and they may go up into the mangroves if the waters allows them. In some areas on low tide situations, the flat may become so dry that the fish will come right off to the edge of the flat to where there is a ditch, a channel, or a drop off into the open bay, and they'll sit there and hug the edge of the, of the flat and try to stay away from dolphins and sharks if they can. And they'll also utilize that low water to feed on any other critters that have been dragged off the flat as well. If a lot of bait fish have moved off the flat, you can often find redfish and other game fish with them as well. 
So the last tip I got for you is huge. You really need to take this one in. If you listen to anything I tell you right now, this is gonna be it. When you're on the flats looking for redfish, you need to learn to find the life. You need to learn to find the fish and other animals that are associated with redfish and other game fish predators. So in particular, when I'm coming across the flat, if I'm seeing a lot of rays, if I'm seeing sharks, I'm seeing crabs swimming around, that's good. That means I'm in an area that has, for whatever reason, probably because of the tide, has collected more life. There's more activity there. And if I see a lot of wading birds in an area, I see a lot of pelicans in an area, in an area that can be really good. But the number one thing I'm looking for is mullet. Mullet are a mostly herbivorous species of fish that feed a lot on grasses and algae, uh, maybe some plankton or small invertebrates and things like that. They get in big schools and they really make a big commotion. They jump out of the water and splash. They chase, chase each other around and swirl the water. So this is going to tell you where a lot of life is congregated. And if you can find some bigger schools of mullet, some big lines of mullet, you can't hardly miss them, especially in shallow water. They're almost always right there at the surface. That's where I'm looking for redfish. And the redfish have a unique relationship with the mullet. They both eat the mullet when they're size appropriate, and they also follow the mullet schools. It's very interesting. So redfish will often follow these schools of mullet. The mullet in big wads come across the flat and eat algae and grass and whatever else they may be able to get and the redfish are often mixed in with those mullet or coming in in a school behind them kind of as a cleanup crew. As the mullet go across the flat and they're chewing down in the grass and whatnot, that kicks up shrimp, that kicks up pinfish, that kicks up crabs, that you know stirs up sardines and other stuff like that. That's gonna be a great opportunity for a redfish or a snook or whatever species of predator to come in and just grab an easy meal. The mullet are doing all the work. So number one, looking for where the life has accumulated, especially those mullet schools, they're really easy to spot. You can run a flat and you can find them. Um, that's going to show you where basically the party has moved to. And the redfish are often going to be moving with the mullet activity. So if you can find where in a particular area the mullet are moving in and out of, you can predict with some accuracy how to set up, when to be there, which way you should face, and you can sit there and wait for the fish to come to you. This is a really cool thing. And this is something I've actually shown in previous head first fishing videos. We showed it up there with Captain Jeremiah up in Crystal River, with Captain Jim here in Tampa Bay, and uh, we've caught a lot of really nice redfish Basically, in a low water situation, like I've told you already, the water has drawn out the redfish and the mullet. The tide is just starting to come back in. The mullet come in with the tide, and here come the redfish right behind them. They're coming almost in tandem, basically. So they have this symbiosis that is really important for you to understand. So get out there on the flats. Find, number one, the best areas, the best habitat. Number two, after you've networked and narrowed that down a little bit more, get out there and spend a lot more time with intent looking for these fish. Skip everything else, cover ground, cover water on your pole, on your trolling motor, on your paddle, and just look for redfish and be ready to strike because you may find a big school of them. Number three, try to find redfish that are more concentrated. Low water situations tend to accumulate fish, so use that to your advantage. Then number four, try to find the party. If you can find out where the most amount of life is, if you can find where those mullet schools are, good chance you're gonna find a whole lot of redfish. Be ready to sneak up on them and strike with a well-placed cast or a nice spread of live baits. I hope you found this video informative. Definitely hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button to be kept up with all the information we have coming down the line. And now for this episode's expert advice. When launching your boat at the boat ramp, be sure to start your engine with the boat at the top of the ramp. Take your time, go to the bathroom, come back, load your gear, your kids, and you'll have a nice warm engine that is ready for the day.
If you have OSHA compliance questions or concerns, Pike Group's got you covered.